Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey, and welcome back for episode 46 of the Celis Factory series here on YouTube. In this video, we're setting up a larger scale aluminum ingot factory in the swamp. At 3600 per minute, this should really help cover the huge amount needed for some of our final builds. It's a lot of big numbers, but super clean and 100% efficient. Thank you for all the support and help with the series so far. Let's get to playing games. It's everybody's favorite day of the week. It's another... Chef Replays Games episode. Welcome back, everybody. I appreciate you being here. It is... Well, I think this is going to be a bit of an easier episode. Um, it's going to be a... Super factory, kind of, more or less. Or just for doing aluminum. Um, I realized as I was looking into game planning some builds going forward, I need a whole heck of a lot of aluminum. Um, so I figured today we could start it off with... Uh, 3,600, 3,600 per minute aluminum ingots. Um, should be pretty pretty straightforward, I think. The numbers are quite large, but nice and even. There's nothing too crazy going on, I don't think. Uh, it should be, for the most part, somewhat easy to follow along with. I hope I don't make too many mistakes. But if I follow my Microsoft Paint drawing, which was not really much of anything this time, but... Uh, if, if I follow along with it, then it should work out pretty easily. Um, you know, it's just a lot, of, a lot of belts and stuff moving around and a bunch of different machines. So it looks, if you see on the side, you, we need some miners. I've already set them up, but I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll show them you, to you guys so you know how to set everything up. You will need miners for, or it's uh, six quartz miners. It's... Um, I forget how many bauxite miners, and it is, I believe, uh, four, three, three coal miners. And then for the actual build, once we actually, I've, I've set up like a concrete platform where we're building today, where we're building in the swamp. The swamp is going to become our new aluminum super factory. Um, so we're going to head on over there. You're going to need 10 water extractors, 30 refineries. 120 constructors for silica and then 60 aluminum foundries uh today we are only going to be using one alternate recipe that is sloppy alumina that takes bauxite and water and turns it into alumina solution uh the reason i'm not using the pure aluminum ingot recipe this time around that cuts out quartz is because there is uh, this is just a more efficient use of the bauxite if you can add in the silica um, if you use the other recipe to take out the silica it's just it's obviously more efficient that you don't need them but you will get less of an output or you'll need more bauxite to to match up with it so let's head on over to the swamp right over here we're gonna shoot ourselves out of a hyper cannon and I'll meet you guys over there all right I am here in the swamp with my giant concrete platform here. We're not going to be using all of this today, but I want to be able to leave the space for um, turning some of this into sheets and casings um, as it's needed. Uh, I know the reason I'm just starting with aluminum ingots is because I know at least for, I have a bill coming up with per 15 fused modular frames and it takes uh, like, I think it's like 750, uh, aluminum ingots per minute. So we're going to be banking some of that away. Um, and then, I mean, I'll save the rest of it for, we'll just sync everything for now. And then we'll, we'll figure it out in the, in the future episodes. So I'll kind of show you, as you can see, I have lines kind of coming in from across the way. Uh, those are the last little bit of like the quartz was literally right there. The reason I built here was because there are quartz right there. You get a bunch of bauxite just down underneath my platform here. There is a pure, a normal, and an impure. So basically what I'm looking for uh, in terms of my bauxite is... I think it was six lines of 600 because, yeah, I need three 3,000 bauxite per minute. Five. It's five lines of 600. Yeah, I haven't looked these up to the uh, the platform yet, but I'll just show you what they're going to be. So we have the pure one here set to 600. 
We have the normal one here set to 600. And we have the impure one here set to 300. So there's two of our five lines of 600 done right there. This 300 will actually mix in with uh, that pillar over there in the in the distance right there. Uh, there are two more bauxite nodes over there. One is a 300, so it's going to mix in with that. That'll give you another lot. That's three. And then another one of 600 comes from over there as well. That is four. And then the fifth comes from down here. Um, if you go up there just a little bit um, above the waterfall, you can vaguely see kind of through the tree. I have a concrete pillar there. Right there is a pure node of bauxite as well. So that is your five lines of 600. Now for coal, you need to bring 1800 per minute. So I have two normal nodes back there a little bit. That's going to come down that section there. And that is enough room for four conveyor belts along this line here. And the third one actually comes from up behind the bauxite node. There's a couple that you can choose from to bring them over with. Um, I, ch I, I just brought it over and back there since it was easy to connect up with that bauxite. And that'll bring over another 600. There are three normal coal nodes. And then I just overclocked them all the way to 600. So yeah, a bunch of minor mark threes. Again, I just bought the materials for them because we have a bunch of tickets to make use of. So uh makes it a little bit easier for us we are going to be automating all the things you need for actually crafting them going forward that's basically the next handful of episodes over the next few weeks so make sure you stay tuned for all of that um and today let's jump into our aluminum ingot recipe or build um so we can go ahead and get started with i'm not going to worry about running all belts over I'll, I'll cut through and do that later I would like to start out pretty easy today with uh, just the actual construction of everything. So it should be pretty easy. We do need 10 water extractors and I think they'll probably fit uh, down here. I think you can put water extractors in here. Let's find out together, shall we? You cannot put water extractors in here. Okay. Good to know. Where can I put them that I can bring them over? Okay, cool. So I'll just have to build a little uh, 10 water extractor water facility here by the waterfall, which is actually a really nice view. I like it right here. I think, in, I think maybe 1.0 we'll consider building another like factory over here. Um, yeah, for now, we just need to throw down 10 water extractors to... And then we'll have to pipe the water over from here. This is going to be sending 1200 so you can just do two lines of 600 and then the rest of the water you need actually 3000 water total uh for this oh my mic just clipped sorry about that uh you need 3000 water total for this entire setup however if you remember the aluminum scrap uh recipe actually outputs water so we're going to be taking some of the water from that and recycling it back into the lines for the uh all the sloppy lumen recipe um so that's where i might get things might get a little weird uh and i'm gonna get a little creative with moving some things around but it should be all right um so yeah let's go ahead and throw down let me get some foundations here and we will start with a um this little platform setup where i can put the water extractors in and Start where I start worrying about running the pipes over. So I kind of want to get them figure out where be a good spot. So maybe we'll connect it in there. Get these zooped. How high out of the water is that? Uh, it's not bad. I feel like I could go a little lower though. So I'm going to grab two meter foundations. As long as that's not in the water. Nope, just above it. Okay. So this is where I want to line the water extractors up with. I guess I could do like five on each side. I'll just do like a line. Do like a double line down this way. Let's do five on each side. Okay, I don't know why. Must be like a 
weird like up and down pool i had to actually shift this water extractor over a little bit when i was lining them all up because it said right next to it the resource was not deep enough so i'm not sure if it's going to say the same thing on this other side let's find out there we go one two three four okay this side's deep enough well nope, that sucked should have built it back just a tiny little bit further but that's okay so now we can go ahead and connect all of these up together or not like to get like five all connect five together we're gonna throw down our typical fluid buffers here at the end now one thing to keep in mind and i feel like i definitely should have mentioned this previously and i, I definitely have not uh when you put in the fluid buffers like this um all your your 10 meter head lift from your water extractors gone um, as soon as you put these down so you're going to want to make sure you actually uh, keep that in mind for when you have to pump fluids up uh, as soon as you go into a fluid buffer you have no more head lift as far as i can tell um, that just seems to be the way it's worked in the past if i'm wrong and i just seem to be running into some sort of weird issue let me know uh but yeah it's been it's been weird so far uh, but yeah or yeah so far it's been when i put things into industrial flu buffers i get no more head lift out of it all right there we go we got our 10 water extractors hooked up both going into industrial flu buffers not to worry about hooking up power for now but uh you don't have to do any underclock and overclocking here just leave them set to 120 and that should be a line of 600. So I'm just going to quickly run these two lines over to uh, probably that pillar there so we can run it up the side and then we will move on to or I guess here I'll take I showed you guys these already I technically cheated a little bit that off the to-do list uh, yeah those are the 10 water extractors that means that's done as well uh, we're just going to run these pipes over and then we'll set up our 30 refineries. All right. Well, I mean, that was a lot easier than running all the 16 and law, super long pipes I had to do for the nuclear project. That was so much easier. Um, and really, I should have sent the platform over, over this way instead of running them up and then running them back over all the way this way. But this is kind of how I want to lay it out so I have enough space. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the 15 uh refineries for sloppy alumina we are going to go ahead and grab my blueprints production we are going to use what comes in here it takes a solid and a liquid and outputs a liquid okay i don't actually have a specific blueprint for this and i suppose i could go make one um but i'm just going to use this is my oops residual fuel refineries where it has it's just pipes inputs outputs so since i just need to add a solid input then this should be pretty easy so we'll just do a line of 15 of these so let me go ahead and give myself just a little bit more space here because i'm gonna need to put in um a not a super complicated um bit of pipes behind it but we go one two three four five five times three is 15 so then we'll just whoa oh is there backwards i was like what some pipes are orange there we go okay so just gonna connect these pipes up together Maybe we'll turn them blue at some point since this is technically water, not heavy oil residue. Okay, so I do want them all sharing like one big line. Right here, I'm just going to dye everything blue really quick. There, should be a little bit easier to follow now at least. So, here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to have going into each three there's a feeder pipe so right here 
In the middle, I'm going to put a junction. That's where I'm going to build the feeder line. So these three get one. These three get one. These three get one. And these three get one. Now, in between these, I'm going to put fluid buffers. So bear with me on this one. I hope this will make sense in the end. They don't have to be exactly in the middle. They just need to be there in general. So what I'm going to do is that, you know, 15, because 15 refineries could end up giving you some sloshing issues, right? So what I'm going to do, and especially with more, like, it's we're trying to move full 600 pipes. So this was my plan, right? So if I go like this, and I kind of create a loop. For the water to feed into, there will always be enough water to be pulled into the system. This may be unnecessary, but I'm starting to add fail safes so that we don't, so that we start having less issues going forward. Okay, so that's the little loop that we're going to have going there. There, sorry, I had the loop on the end set up, so I want it actually looping around the system like that. So I gotta go fix this one too. We'll take that out. I'll show you guys how we do it. So I'm going to line it up. Put there. And then it wrap. Oop. It should wrap perfectly around to that spot right there. Just like that. And then we're going to have our feeder pipe there. Feeder pipe there. And feeder pipe there. So the reason I'm doing this is each three is going to take 200 cubic waters. Cubic meters of water per minute. So if this, is, if this is a perfect line of 600, it should split evenly between the three. And then the whole system can share water with this like loop system going around. Oh, fingers crossed. This might be stupid and pointless, but hopefully it, hopefully it helps us out. So go ahead and set all of these to wait. Do I already have these. How is this one already set to a luminous solution? I don't remember doing that. Wait, why is, why is the one on the end of my blueprint all set to do a luminous solution? All right. <laughs> it's supposed to be sloppy alumina. There we go. And like I said, this is all the, um, everyone's at a hundred percent, no underclocking or overclocking required. There we go. I'm going to have to go back and look at that blueprint because I didn't realize I did that. So now, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, and that's the exact amount of uh, pipes of water I needed to bring in. So the, the three, there's going to be three water pipes that come out of the refineries that these are feeding into. And these are the other two. So we're just going to go ahead and hook these bad boys up into the line. And I don't think it'll really matter. It, like I said, you're really just looking for the 600 water total. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hook these up, probably just do them right here. And then we'll set the refineries up in front of it. And then they'll loop back to this side, I think. So the input of these is bauxite. I think I'll just do all that from down below so that I can save the space up here for all the pipes and everything. So we got logistics, we're gonna have our floor holes. We'll put those in all along here and then I'll cut back in after the autosave is done and we'll put in the uh, next round of refineries. Okay, so these pipes on the back, you're actually gonna wanna go ahead and disconnect all the connecting ones first, and then I will show you how we're going to connect everyone up together. So the way this is actually going to work, once you've actually taken out your connector pieces, we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the aluminum scrap refineries. So we're going to do the same thing because it's just a, a solid and a liquid input. 
with a... Oh, it's a solid output. Okay, sorry. Hang on. So yeah, we're going to go pure ingot refinery, actually. Also works for aluminum scrap. So you're going to go ahead and just slide these in. Make sure they're actually lined up. And you're going to see why in just a moment. So we're going to go... Actually, I think myself just a little bit more space. That's one, two, three. Oh, I didn't turn them around again. Actually, I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take the residual fuel refineries and then I'll just add in the solid input again. And you'll see why. So that I can just directly connect these to each other without having to uh, worry about a head lift issue. So we're just going to slide these in to three, four, and five. Come on. Come on. There you go. You got it. So now what we're going to do is you're actually going to hook these refineries directly ch to each other. So you're also going to have to take off the, I mean, I guess you could technically leave the connector pipes and you probably could have done so back here as well. Um, maybe I, I might put them back in if I notice any issues, but this is literally all you got to do. That's one refinery to the next. And then we're going to feed the coal in from down below so that we can just leave it like this. I think this looks cool. And then the water that comes out of these refineries, I confused myself, thought it was these ones. The water comes out of these refineries. We're going to run back around to back into these ones to make sure there's enough water in the system. So yeah, I mean, if you want to leave the connector pieces in, I'm sure you can. I don't think it's really going to cause any like that much of a big deal. I mean, you can even connect everything all along down here if you wanted to. But uh, I mean, I guess I guess you technically don't because they get shared here at the end. So yeah, if you just want to connect these ones in at the end, that's probably fine. So that is the refineries for the aluminum scrap. And those you can go ahead and set to also to 100%. So we're going to go ahead and grab aluminum scrap. We're going to copy that and just paste it all the way along down here. And then we'll put in the floor holes as well for bringing in the coal, but we won't worry about that just yet. Let's show you guys how to bring the water around. So um, basically you can connect five of these together uh, at once. So this is where you're also going to disconnect these from each other. Um, because I'm pretty sure this might make things a little weird if you don't. So I'm just going to disconnect those ones. Actually, that was wrong. Okay, there we go. Now, I, now we've split it five and five. That's how it's supposed to be. Because uh, each one is going to output 120. It's basically each one is like a water, another water extractor. So we're going to send these also into a fluid buffer just to make things you know a little bit cleaner hopefully uh so we're just gonna i'm just gonna use the little ones though once we get into this system we're just gonna go on there on there and one there just so we don't have any issues with them uh, outputting. And then I'm going to run these two around the back of this side. And I'll run this one around this side. So we got three pipes over here. I basically just link them up. So we go. Bring this one in line with these. So there's three, and then these ones can go over this way. So we'll send this one first. This one goes along the center line here. This one can go along the middle. There we go. I'm just going to wrap these two around the back, and we'll hook them in, and then we'll hook those three in. And like I said, it doesn't really matter which inputs you put them into. You just want to hook, you just need five pipes going into the, into the main line there. There we go. That is the water system for 
the refineries. So you have one pipe coming out of these five. That's feeding your 600. You got another, you got two pipes coming from over there. Those both are full of 600. One goes in there, one goes in there. And then you got your other two of 600 coming around the backside. One in there, one in there. And then with some flu buffers kind of sharing it all in between. Now, like I said, this should work. Uh, I'll just make sure obviously it's completely full. We'll preload it. That's another good thing about this is we all to just turn on those water extractors and it should preload actually the entire water line. So that'll be helpful. Um, so now we just have to do the inputs and output. Like, well, I'll probably just do, should I just send everything, uh, down below? Probably just send everything down below. Yeah. So I'll put some, uh, put some output lines for these as they're going to need somewhere to put all that aluminum scrap. Now, the way this is actually going to work is each refinery is actually going to, or I guess technically we can combine two together because 360 times two, oops, not 92, two is 720. So yeah, technically we combine two together and then you could feed um, the lines of constructors. But the way I'm actually going to do it, uh, or not the constructors, these are foundries. So the way I'm going to set up the foundries is I'm going to do them in lines of four. And each line, I was basically going to do 15 lines of four. So each refinery would just feed a line of four. And then the same thing will happen from the um, silica constructors. We're going to do 15 groups of six. And then we'll just do like one, 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 one. Because the numbers are just so huge. And like trying to split them like evenly would just be a pain in the butt. So to keep things nice and easy and clean, I'm just going to do it one, like one line each. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to, we'll give it a little bit of space because we'll run underneath, but uh, we'll line up all our constructors or sorry, I just see all our foundries um, going along uh, this way, I think. So that way we can have the, uh, the aluminum scrap feeding in from this side. And then I can feed the quartz in from this side because we're gonna have to set up all our constructors down here and then it'll all just meet right in the middle. So let's do our, uh, I kind of have these out of order, like, so the refineries are technically done. We just have to do the inputs and outputs. Now I want to do, oh, whoops. The silica constructors, I'm actually going to do after the aluminum foundries, just so I know like where I, I'm able to put them. And I may find myself wanting to add like a little bit more space down there. We'll see. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the, where is it? I don't actually have a foundry blueprint. Um, perhaps I should consider making one. Now nah, we'll probably be fine. Um, see so here, what I'll do is I'll just start putting in it's, it's 15 groups of four. So yeah, it's, uh, it'd be like one, two, three, four. So do that 15 times with a little bit of space in between, obviously. They took up a little bit more space than I thought. So I grouped them up into eight. There's seven rows of eight and then one row of four. That's a total of 60. Now I'm still going to feed them as groups of four because I technically have to, um, or I guess, no, I technically don't have to, I suppose I could do. So I think the way this would split up is two refineries would feed each line and then the one refinery on the end feeds the one line. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. That'll be easier. So yeah, do, do, uh, mergers. So you'll need two, you need one, two, you need seven mergers downstairs. That'll make things probably a little, a little bit cleaner. Actually, you have to do less belt work down below. So that'll be nicer. So we're going to do actually, should I even bother sending them down below? Could just merge them up. Top. Yeah, I'll send them down below and then we'll bring them back up. So for now, we'll just do our logistics from our splitters. So we don't have a ton of space here, obviously. So we're going to go one splitter line feeding down like that. That's going to be our alumina solution or sorry, our aluminum scrap. And then we need mergers for this side. They're going to send everything also down that way. That's fine. So just slide those in there. 
going to show you how to set up one line and then we'll just skip ahead to like once I've done all the other ones. So now we're going to grab, we're just going to do, you can do whatever belts you want. I'm not going to worry about calculating these out right now because it's just going to slow us down. So we're just going to throw in our Mark V belts. We have lots of aluminum sheets. So get all these connected up together. Not like that. Um, so essentially what we're going to want to do now is you'll want to put floor holes um, for the right input of the foundries and that'll be for your silica. Or should we just bring it in, bring it in from above, keep things a little bit cleaner? Yeah, let's do that. We're going to bring it in from above. So let me take these belts out really quick, just so I can fit this in easier. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab splitter here. Input facing from where the quartz constructors will be. Stack them three high. Do that all the way down. You're going to grab your lifts. I'm going to go from... The split. Oh, those got off. Those got off centered heavily. There you go. We got lifts all the way down. So that'll be for the cords. And so now we just got to connect all these up together. This will be our manifold line. We're up here. That'll be the manifold line for down below. And I think that'll work because I was originally doing. Can I do? Okay, sorry, I was just doing some quick math. I was like, well, I want to make sure these can actually be fed properly. So yeah, each line of these is going to take 600 silica. So that'll be totally fine. So now you're just going to go ahead and you can copy and paste this um, onto each uh, bit here. Um, and then, but for now we will, so technically that's the aluminum foundries taking off the to-do list. Um, we're going to need... We'll just do uh, these out. These are about like 30, 3,600 total. So we'll probably just need a couple sinks to fire these into for now at least. Yeah, each line is going to output 480. So we'll just put a sink on the end of each one with a Mark IV conveyor belt. So it's a nice full line going right into the sink. So each of these... Um, lines of foundries is going to be need to be fed by 16 constructors so i think the best way of actually going about this one is going to be using my eight constructor manifold so that we can do we can just stack this in twice and i think that'll work numbers wise anyway so if we go where are we at here on my my platform so we'll start one here Make sure everything's actually going away from me. So I'm just going to test this out first to see if this works. I think it does. Yep, okay. Everything all checks out math-wise. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need seven of these. And then I think just one. So technically uh, we'll need like quite a few of these blueprints. So we'll go uh, with the, we'll have to change the belts as well. Totally forgot about that just now. So we can squeeze these in next to each other here. Shouldn't be too big of, a, uh, of an issue. Yeah, like I said, you need seven rows of these. This will be two. You need five more from here. All right, there we go. So that sea of constructors that you see in front of you is the seven groups of 16 constructors that we're going to need to feed those. And then for the last four on the end here, you just need like one of these. So we just go like this. We put in one more right there. And that'll feed that bad boy right there. 
So I did give myself enough room for at least this build, but I thought I built enough with enough space to add in like more machines for other things. But turns out we're going to have to expand quite a bit for the rest of this. So we're going to go ahead and connect. Um, let's jump into a little, um, or here, I'll, I'll do all these really quick and then I'll jump into a montage of maybe I think we could, yeah, we got to do a bunch of power and connecting up belts. So I'll probably do that as a little montage and then we'll come back and we'll start turning things on. But yeah, so this is, like I said, this is doing silica. You're going to want to just copy and paste this onto everybody. Um, there's no underclocking or overclocking required here. So even the same thing, we can double check here our math. So we need 75 times four here. That's 300. So basically need 300 each, obviously, because we needed 600 for that. So this outputs a total of 300. So if we go silica, 375 times eight, or 37.5 times eight, sorry, 300. Perfect. So that'll be all of our silica taken care of. And those will just be nice, easy belts into those. Should be nice and um, everything is just staying up top here. So it'll be in a fairly clean. And then we can hook everything up to power and then we'll be, we'll be ready to, to fire this, this factory on. This definitely isn't going to be too long of an episode, definitely a bit of a shorter one. Um, but I just wanted to slow it down a bit for anyone who's trying to follow along. So maybe I can stop making mistakes people can actually follow along without um, having to redo everything going forward but this should be a this should be a good one so like I said let's go ahead and we'll just copy and paste this setup into every line here and then we will start connecting a whole bunch of stuff together over here and then we need to run just run a bunch of belts over that I probably won't even montage I'll probably just cut through it's literally just gonna be running belts from their spawn over to the actual factory and then I'll maybe show you just a quick little if you need to know how to hook them up. But I feel like I've left this layout fairly simple to where we're basically at the point now where it's just going to be connecting machines to other machines and firing this up. So one thing I'm just going to change before you guys see me get started here, I'm actually going to send these mergers um, over this way. I'm going to send them down the line, I think, uh, just because I was I'm probably going to send the um, alumina aluminum scrap down and then back up for this uh, because there's going to be a lot of belts running over here. Actually, maybe not. I guess there's not going to be that many belts running. Yeah, so my, my thought process is we need to put a, like a sink here somewhere. I guess I can just put that down below as well. Um, yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's leave it the way it is. We'll, we'll just copy and paste this for now. Merger is going this way, and then the splitter is kind of on top of each other like this. So copy, paste, go. All right, copy and paste complete. So now we can actually start to hook some belts up here. So like I said, we're going to want to take two um, from each of these refineries. And we're going to merge them together and feed one line of each of these. And then on the very end here, we'll just take this last refinery and it can just feed this, this one solo. So, um, I'm going to try and let me see if I can keep everything up above. If not, I'll just run it as a quick little line down below. So it's a little bit cleaner. Actually, you know what? I think I'll just do it down below. So really you just have to run two of these together. So we'll show you one and then we'll skip ahead. Well, that's great, man. It's starting to get a little, a little laggy here. Um, so we're going to go into logistics. We're going to grab our conveyor mark, our conveyor floor holes. I'm going to combine two of these together. I'm just going to use the Mark V list just because I can. So you're going to come down below here. You finish bringing those down. I got those facing the wrong way. There we go. You're going to bring them down like that. 
you are going to stick a merger in the middle of them. Just like that. And then with your Mark V conveyor belts, you can make right angles if you want. You don't have to. I always try and keep it nice and neat. And then you're going to, I should have put the floor hole up here first. Uh, you're going to grab, not, not my blueprint. You're going to grab the floor hole one more time. And it's going to feed into this um, splitter here. Make sure it's actually facing the right way. We want the output going into there. And we're going to grab those one more time. Spin it around. Put the bombs away. Crazy man. Straight line right into there. And that'll be um, all of your aluminum scrap fed to the aluminum ingot lines. So you're just going to go ahead and you're going to do that all the way down the way. And then, like I said, the one, the refiner here on the very end, you can do it. I don't even know if we need to worry about sending it down. We probably will. We'll just send it down below, send it to this um, splitter here, and that'll be all your aluminum scrap taken care of. And then we can move on to the quartz. All right, there we go. I was just doing a little bit of calculations for how many or how we could actually set this up. So basically you're going to need to feed. I have a splitter here and then a merger going so I'm able to feed I believe it's 32 constructors with one line of 720 and then your one line on the end here since you're missing a little bit is only going to need 540 so you'll need four lines of 720 raw quartz coming in and then you'll need one line of 540 coming in so we're going to run those from those miners over there should be no problem and then we can connect these into here, the constructors over to there. So essentially how I was going to have this work was you would have the line of 720 come into the splitter and it would go into these manifold lines here. And then these are going to each group of um, constructors like this is just going to feed into one line here. So we're going to connect these up by going, um, are these going to be the right way? I think so. Yeah. So these are going to be feeding in. We'll line these up just all the way down here. And then same with this one. This is just going to get the single, single line from over there. But I mean, they all technically will be single lines in the end. So in front of each group of 16, you're going to have to put a merger in like this. And you can always line it up with the, uh, to get a nice straight line across there. And then you're going to just want to bring the belts over like this. So merge those two lines together to feed one lift across there and that will feed all the silica into the aluminum line and that will be technically everything so i can also technically take off the everything from the to-do list so we'll just go ahead and i'll connect up the belt lines along here and then we're going to run everything over and then we can start turning things on i think maybe i'll just skip the power montage this time i feel like we've done that enough times now i'm literally I mean, these are already all connected up. Those are already connected up. I basically just have to run power to all the foundries. So we'll just kind of skip, skip through that part. And uh, so what I'm going to do now when we come back, we're going to get all these connected up. We're going to bring our lines over. We're going to hook our power up. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to turn everything on. Okay, sorry to skip ahead a little bit there, but uh, we have a new day coming up. Things are all hooked up to power. I've got my belts running. I mean, I hooked up the power to the miners and the water extractors just to preload our, our system here so that I can now turn things on with you guys. Um, I, just, I had some stuff come up while I was recording, so I kind of forgot where it was for a second, but um, I think that should pretty much cover it. Um, I'll double check with you guys just like minor numbers. Um, I mean, the, the bauxite ones were easy. Like I said, you just needed five lines of 600 coming in. So you got five lines of 600 and then 
I have one line of 300 there and one line of 300 from there. They merge together before they feed the line over here. Then you've got the aluminum solution pumping right here straight into the aluminum scrap uh, refineries where they will also be fed with the coal. The coal lines you bring in three lines of 600 and uh, each of those can feed five. So that was pretty straightforward. Just bring them in, run them into splitters, all little manifold lines, and she's ready to go. So I did the same thing with the bauxite. Bauxite is just feeding, um, was it 200? Yeah, so you could feed three refineries per line of uh, 600. That's why you needed five. And so now we've got everything feeding over to our foundries here. We've also got our lines of silica all set up, ready to go. No, I don't. I'm just kidding. I still need to do these last little belts here. So yeah, we're just throwing in some last minute mergers to uh, take these over just like this. We're going to line it up with the belt. It goes over here. Here it is right there. I'm going to put it out a little bit because otherwise it's going to be a little hard to get these connected in with each other. So I know that can't be a, I don't think that can be a right hand turn. No, it cannot. That's fine. I'd rather that and have a straight line right across that like that. That's much better. Then we get a 90 degree turn right here. And then, yeah, we're just going to do that all the way down. Can't believe I totally, from, that would have been funny. I would have fired up the system and like, why is nothing move? Oh, right. But uh, yeah, you got your, your 120 constructors over here. But the really nice thing about this build is the only overclocking I had to do was on all the miners. Um, but on all the... Um, actual factory pieces everything with like no underclocking no overclocking nothing just straightforward just put in the machines and we're ready to go a lot of it was just connecting things up to each other too this was a, a pretty nice build I mean it is pretty straightforward of just doing really big numbers there we go almost forgot but we got her finished up okay so now we can go ahead and take a power line and connect the I think this connects most of the factory except for these refineries right here i wanted to make sure we actually got a little bit of aluminum solution um flowing it in first which it's not going to take very long because we're not there's no like manifold system here like it's just straightforward feeding so i'm just going to hook these up temporarily just like that that fires up most of the system as you see this is totally fine because we're preloaded with water. The only thing we might be missing is uh, enough bauxite to keep these going. But as soon as I see a little bit of aluminum solution flowing in here, I can go ahead and hook these up. Because I see silica starting to feed into the line here. So any second now we should start to see the aluminum scrap flowing in here. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. Oh, what happened? Did I not connect these to power? I did not. Okay, there we go. Things are actually on. Uh, oh, I've got to turn on a couple of the constructors over here. I also forgot to put in the um, sinks really quick. So let me throw those in. All right, there we go. Sinks are in very temporarily of the very ugly, um, but they're just kind of, we're not going to be using them for very long. Obviously, we're going to start using some of this stuff, so... I just put in for now just so we can actually have this uh, whole system up and running so let's run and paste uh anything we see red here in silica we're gonna make sure we actually paste in the settings because that means it got missed when i was setting things up any other reds there's one there And one there. Just got missed when I was doing my copy. Oh, a couple down here too. Oopsie. Okay, there we go. I think I got everything all set up now. We got all the all the constructors are now on and working. So they're throwing all their silica into the system. Everything seems to be working okay so far. It'll take a little bit to get everything properly backed up on this side, which will kind of flow over into here, backing this section up. But these ones shouldn't be too big of a deal. I saw those go yellow for a second. Is it their output or their input? Okay, yeah. So they're just waiting on coal. So yeah, that's just going to be another thing of whole. Uh, we're just waiting for it to actually make its way over here from the miner. Which is totally fine. 
So, I mean, honestly, that's that's pretty much it. I know this might be a little bit of a shorter one, a little bit of an easier one. Oh, look, see, we missed a missed one. I see red lights. I panic. I'm like, wait a second. I see red light over there too. But yeah, thank you guys again so much for uh, hanging with me for another episode. Um, this was basically more or less uh, a preparation episode for the next ones coming up, which um, kind of felt necessary. Like I said earlier, we have a lot of aluminum that's going to be needed going forward. So I was like, maybe we should take a minute and build a aluminum super factory because my original plan was just jump into the fuse modular frames and I probably would have done this. But then the next build, we would make aluminum again and then again and again. And I was like, let's just do it in one. Do it in one little preparation episode. Um, Oh yeah, I wanted to show you the quartz miners really quick just in case anyone's following along and uh, is a little confused as to how you get the lines of 720 that you're looking for here. So actually it's three lines of 720 and one line of 540. The one line of 540 obviously is pretty easy. I just did that off the one miner here. And then the other lines of 720, I did three lines of 600. So you got 600, 600, and a 600. And then there's a line of... 360 coming right here and it splits 120 120 and 120 turning all the lines of 600 into 720s so that's uh should feed the lines perfectly um like i said i don't think this might be one of the first episodes in a while where i don't think i've made any mistakes so if you're following along it should match up perfectly all my math works out thankfully it was nice and even and i guess i'll see you guys in the next one or some fused modular frames. Oh, I see another red light. How dare me. There we go. That's hopefully the last one of the episode. And I'll see you guys in the next one.